Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael, AKA Victor, and I'm gonna walk you through the 100 degree challenge. So this is basically a brief explanation of my logic to self-realization. So this is gonna be a public review of my information. I'm trying to see where the errors are in my logic or in my thinking. Not saying that I'm right, I've been wrong before and I can be wrong now, but the question is, where am I wrong in what is the latest information, right? So about this challenge, so this is my challenge to the world to prove that what I'm saying is not possible, okay? Now I understand that there's a lot of theories, there's a lot of belief, there's a lot of dogma, there's a lot of all of this stuff, and we're gonna get into it, but the thing is, is what I'm talking about possible. This is my experience, so in my mind, it's definitely possible because I'm living it. And if I'm nobody special, then you can also experience it as well. So I am laying this out to see whether or not it's possible, it definitely is, but to show you that it's possible so that it opens up a probability for you, all right? So the whole idea about the challenge is a parable on water. Water changes form when it goes from 98 degrees, 99 degrees to 100 degrees. It goes from just hot water to steam. It's the same thing, water, H2O, but it's a different state. So we have different states that we can experience as well. And self-realization is just a different state of who you are, all right? So that's the water parable. Now I'm gonna go through this kind of quick for the sake of time, but you can walk through these slides on your own leisure, leisure if you try to have a British accent, right? You can walk through these slides on your own time and take your time with them. And the definitions that I'm using are based on Google. I'm not saying Google is the end all be all of everything, but there's a reason for this. And I'm only talking about a top level thing. There's, there's plenty of rabbit holes to go down to, go down in. But I'm using Google because that's a, a repository of information, if you will. And when AI comes online, and eventually it will, it's gonna use Google as a source of information. So Google is something we all can Google and check out, and you can see the definition that I use as well. So I'm not trying to have a source that you have to buy a book to get to or anything. So when I talk about something, I'm gonna give the definition as well. All right, so the challenge basics. So what can we agree on is facts, all right? So let's pay attention to any inner resistance at certain degrees, okay? Because that's gonna let you know where you drop off. And not everyone is gonna agree all the way to 100 degrees, right? There's gonna be certain levels where people drop off, and that's fine. Um, the thing is, is just shifting the conversation from the things that keep us separated to a higher degree. And we're gonna get into that a little later. So we're gonna start with 10 degrees, okay? Intelligence exists. Can you agree that intelligence exists? Now, what is intelligence? Intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills according to Google. So I believe intelligence exists because we all are intelligent and we've acquired the knowledge up to this point. We started off coming into this world not knowing anything, and we acquired the knowledge to where we can record things, we can watch things, and these things that we're doing now, we didn't know that we can do as a child. So intelligence exists and intelligence evolves, right? So we're good on that. 20 degrees, matter exists. Matter is the physical substance in general as distinct from mind and spirit, especially as distinct from energy according to Google. So matter is the thing that is physical that we all interact with. And matter, they say, is of the same energy and cannot be created nor destroyed. That's one of the fundamental laws of matter. So matter exists, and I believe that, and I interact with matter, and you interact with matter. You're watching this on something that's made of matter. So you agree with me up to 20 degrees, hopefully. And it doesn't mean that you do because there's somebody that dropped off that 20 degrees that I'm related to that had a problem with matter because they confused physical matter with something like what's the matter. So not saying everyone is going to go up in the, in the ladder as, as you're going to go. So I appreciate you standing up to this point. So nature exists. What is nature? Nature is the phenomena of the physical world collectively as opposed to humans or human creations according to Google. So basically anything that is not human is nature. So does nature exist? Yes, we have plenty of examples of nature. So that's 30 degrees. So 40 degrees, life exists. So what is life? Life is the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter according to Google. Okay, so you have basically things that are alive, like us, and you have things that are not alive, like rocks, minerals, and stuff like that, water, if you, in, in, in an instance. Um, and you can debate that as well, but we have examples of life being in existence, and we're examples of life, we are alive, right? So that's 40 degrees. So 50 degrees, human beings exist. 
So again, this is an idea of agreement. And they're going to get harder as we go up, so just follow along with me. So 50 degrees, human beings exist. A human being is a man, woman, a child of the species Homo sapiens, distinguished from other animals by superior mental development, power to articulate speech, and upright stance, according to Google. Again, I'm using Google because when AI comes online, AI is going to be using Google for its definitions. And the reason I mention AI so much is because you can imagine me as a time traveler coming back and it's still in a higher level of consciousness or spirituality before AI comes online because based on all of the sci-fi movies, when AI comes online, it's basically going to do things that we imagine it to do because we haven't evolved spiritually as we have technologically, right? That's just something to throw in as an aside. So that's 50 degrees. Right? 60 degrees. Consciousness exists. Now, some would drop off here. Some will believe they're not conscious. If you're strictly a materialistic person, you may not believe that you're a conscious being, and that's fine. There's some people that believe that. So 60 degrees. Consciousness exists. Consciousness is the state of being aware and aware of one's surroundings, according to Google. So if you're aware of your surroundings, then you are definitely conscious. So does consciousness exist? We are conscious beings. Lies exist, okay? That's 70 degrees. A lie is an intentionally false statement according to Google. So you have to have an intention of deceiving someone for it to be a lie. If I'm talking about something that I don't know is true or not, I'm not lying to you. If I know it's true or not, and I'm intentionally trying to deceive you, then that is a lie. So the question is, do lies exist? 70 degrees. 80 degrees. Death exists. Death is the action or fact of dying or being killed in the end of a life of a person or organism according to Google. So we've seen things die, we've experienced death in our families and everything, uh, pets, loved ones, so death does exist. Now one of the things that's interesting when you look up the definition of death according to Google, they have an example of she failed to regain consciousness and died two days later. So we're gonna follow up on that a little later. So eight degrees, death exists. I wanna go a little harder, so I'm glad you stuck with me so far. So faith and belief exists. So faith, and there's two definitions of faith when you look up the definition of faith for Google. Now, this one definition talks about God, and uh, I did hear some things when I had a conversation as far as definition of God and all of this stuff. But we're just going to go through this. So faith is a strong belief in God or the doctrines, which is a set of beliefs or religion, based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof, according to Google. And faith can also be an example of, I have faith that this recording, this battery is going to last all the way through. Or I have faith in walking over a bridge that is not going to collapse on me. So faith can be many different things, but we're talking about faith in one aspect and also the second definition is dealing with God. When you talk about belief, belief is an acceptance that a statement is true and acceptance is the action of consenting, which is the permission for something to happen. So when you consent to something, you're given permission. When you accept something, you're, you're actively involved in that. So to have a belief, you're actively accepting that something is true without checking it for yourself, right? So belief is an acceptance uh, that a statement is true and acceptance is the action of consenting to receive or undertake something offered. So belief is something that you have to consent to, right? So faith and belief doesn't exist. Do you agree with that? That's 82 degrees and you see degrees are starting to go up a little bit, right? 84 degrees. Now this one is normally a point of apprehension and you can look at when I did this live in front of an audience where the conversation got a little lively at 84 degrees. Religion exists. Now I'm not talking about any particular religion. I'm not saying if religion is true or false. Just saying that religion exists. So what is religion according to Google? Religion is the belief in worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, a particular system of faith and worship according to Google. Okay. So does that exist? Do you agree that religion exists? 84 degrees, regardless of whether you believe a religion is true or not, just does it exist? Now the word religion is from the Latin word religio, which means obligation, bond, reverence, or religare, I'm probably, probably not pronouncing that right, which means to bind. So that's interesting. You can look up the etymology of these words as well. All right? So that is 84 degrees. Now, we're going to go up in a little more degrees. 86 degrees. Dogma exists. What is dogma? Dogma is the principle, a set of principles laid down by an authority is incontrovertibly true according to Google. So dogma is basically someone telling you that this is true and this is fact. Now, when you look at the word dogma, part of its origin is from the Greek word dogma, which is pretty much the same thing, which means opinion. So it's interesting that the word dogma means something that's incontrovertibly true, but the root of the word means opinion. It's interesting, right? So 88 degrees, spirit, soul exists. Now some people would drop off here. If you're a materialistic scientist, you may drop off here. But what does spirit and soul mean? 
A spirit is a non-physical part of a person that is the seat of emotions and character, the soul, not relating to or concerning the body according to Google. So from a Google standpoint, a soul is not an imaginary thing. It exists, right? Now, the soul is a spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal. So it's the part that can't be measured. So from a materialistic person, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. But who is the one doing the measurement? What is the, the being that is experiencing the act of measurement, right? Now, what's interesting about the soul is the word spirit, or soul, let's talk about spirit. The word spirit has part of its origin in the Latin word spiritus, which means breath. Okay, so that's 88 degrees. And you may drop off here. You may believe that you don't have a spirit or a soul, and that's fine. Uh, so 90 degrees, you are not your senses. So smell, touch, hearing, and taste are the major senses. Now, these are the senses that we interact with with the outside world, and they provide input to your brain, but they are not you. So I'm asking if you agree that you are not your senses. Are you smell? Are you sense? Are you, are you smell? Are you sight? Are you touch? Are you your senses? Or are you something that is receiving input from your senses? 90 degrees. Some may believe that they are the senses. All right, 92 degrees. You are not your body. What is the body? The body is the physical structure of a person according to Google. Now let's go back to this um, definition before or this example that Google gave. She failed to regain consciousness and died two days later. She failed to regain consciousness and died two days later. So what died? Did the body die or did the consciousness die? She failed to regain consciousness and died two days later. So that's something that to marinate on. Now your consciousness observed your entire life. Did it experience age or did your body experience age? That's a question that I'm asking you. So do you agree that you are not your body? 92 degrees. And you see they're getting tougher as we go up in degrees. You are not your thoughts, okay? A thought is an idea or opinion produced by thinking according to Google. So you observe your thoughts and may interact with them and may entertain them, but even when you're not thinking, you're still there. Your thoughts come and go, but you still remain. So are you your thoughts? 94 degrees, okay? Some people believe that they are their thoughts. And you are not your brain. Do you agree with me here? 96 degrees, okay? The brain is an organ of soft nervous tissue functioning as the coordinating center of sensation and intellectual and nervous activity according to Google. So imagine your brain is being your CPU. So what I'm arguing is that we are more than just our physical beings. So it's like the internet. Uh, imagine the internet as compared to a computer. You need a computer to experience the internet the internet is experienced through the computer, but the internet and the computer are separate things. So your CPU, your brain, is what allows your consciousness to interact with this physical reality. But it is not you, just like your CPU is not the internet. A Apple laptop or a uh, Android laptop or any other operating system accesses the internet, but they are not the internet. So that's another parable to, to compare to. So that's 96 degrees. Do you agree that you are not your brain? You are not your feelings. A feeling is an emotional state or reaction according to Google. So you have feelings and some of the strongest ones don't last forever. When they do pass, you still remain. So 98 degrees, are you your feelings? Now we're getting up to 100, so if you're still here, I appreciate you hanging around. And I know some people want to watch to the end just to see where we're going. But that's part of the intention, is to get you to the finish line and see what you passed around or what you passed by to get there so that you realize that we don't need to get caught up in the things that keep us separated and that keep us in this, this, this realm of discussion and, and, and just confusion. And let's see what we can actually get, what is the potential, and then we can discuss these things from a higher perspective. So we're quantum leaping the conversation from here to here, okay? So 99 degrees in this battery is running low. I have faith that it's gonna allow me to finish. So who are you? You are not your feelings, brain, thoughts, or body. If you are not your body, then you are more than how you look. You are not your faith, beliefs, or dogma. If you are not your faith or beliefs, then you're definitely not your religion. If you are not any of those things, then why do you identify with them? Some people identify with their beliefs and their dogma and their religion. Some think that I'm attacking them by just saying the word religion, and I've experienced that as well. If you are not who you thought you were, then who or what is left? So this is 100 degrees. This is crossing that bridge. This is what I'm arguing, that you are a spiritual being having a physical experience. You are the I am. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. It's called by many names, and I'm not trying to get into labels or anything like that. So when you say, I am Michael, for instance, you are saying your true name, I am, just an example, and your ego, your, your avatar, your matrix persona, if you will, uh, your name.
So I am is the being and Michael is the human, human being, being human, right? So you're a part human, physical, and you're a part being, non-physical. The being is your true identity. That's the greater aspect of yourself. That shift in consciousness is what I've experienced what I'm trying to get people to understand is at least a possibility. You have to experience it yourself. It's like me saying, hey, there is uh, gold underneath you at 100 feet. You have to dig 100 feet to get it. If you don't dig 100 feet, you have ignorance of it and you can't say that it's not there or not because um, it's there or not. You can't say it's there or not because you haven't had the experience. You have to dig. You have to search for yourself. You have to go within. So this is just an example of that. I'm just showing you the possibilities and it's up to you to prove me wrong, to prove yourself wrong. Okay? So that is the 100 degree challenge in a nutshell. I'm glad that you listened to it up to this point. Hopefully it was something that wasn't as painful as it could be. And I chose these steps purposely to get you again to the finish line and not get caught up on the things that keep us separated, on the things that keep us fighting amongst each other and get to the bigger picture, to see the bigger picture. I even put out a video about a pixel being light just to show that we all are pixels. We all have the capability of enlightenment, of creating the new reality that we all want to experience. And it's something that's within us all that we have to get in contact with. I'm just showing you the possibility of this. And this is something that, if it's true, can be expressed from a scientific and a spiritual standpoint. And I bypass religion because religion can be dogmatic and it can be something that, yeah, you can believe that your religion is true and this religion is false. But do you ever question your own religion? Just like I'm questioning myself. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is true or not. I definitely believe it's true. I believe I have a high percentage of being true. And I'm asking the world to prove me wrong because I want to learn. And the only way that you can learn is if you're wrong, is if you're able to, to know that you don't know everything. And that's the, for my opinion, the person that is smart knows the limitations of his knowledge. And I definitely know my knowledge is limited. And I want to learn as much as I can in this experience and in this reality. So I appreciate you listening. I'm glad that you're up to this point and that you made it to 100 degrees. And the thing is, if what I'm saying is true, there's an experience for you to have to realize that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. And there are people that I've showed this to and interacted with on this level that are like, duh, that's nothing, I already know this. And there are people that get caught up in 84 degrees, 88 degrees, get caught up in religion and dogma. The thing is, understand that there are intention is to keep you at a lower state of consciousness. I am one of those people that want to get you to a higher state of consciousness. Just like Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. So who's trying to get on a higher level of consciousness to solve the problems of, that we have today? And I'm one of those people. Crazy or not, I'm one of those people that want to actually change the world. And I can't change the world, but we can change the world together. And to change the world, it first starts with changing yourself. And to change yourself, you have to have a different perspective of ourselves, okay? And there's many ways to look at this. Again, I'm just looking at the top level of the pyramid. I'm just looking at that. But your self-esteem, your self-outlook, the way you look at yourself is the base of everything leading up to the action. And we're dealing in the world of action or karma, if you will. But it all starts with who you believe you are and who you are at your core that all ultimately leads to the action that we give. So I appreciate you guys listening. And again, I'm giving you the perspective of me, Michael, and I'm giving this out as a scientist, as a peer review. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear what you think. I want you to take the challenge. I want this to be as popular as the ice bucket challenge. If you poured cold water on yourself, then why not go within yourself to realize who you are? Who is the scientist? Who is the person that believes this, that, and the other? Who is the person that is watching this? Who is the consciousness that is watching this? What is that? And we can go deep, we can look into the, the, all, all the mysteries of science, right? There's a whole lot of things that science is catching up to. And again, I'm coming from a perspective of an angel. An angel is just a messenger. We're all angels. You know, we're all from that creative source that you can call whatever you want to call. We emerge from this matrix, we're here, we're part of the creation, and it's our job to create it the way we want to experience. And I'm hoping that we can create something better than what we have now. And with your help, we can definitely do that. All right, peace.